Hello, and this is a teardown and showcase of the Dell ZX0 um, mini PC, and it's one of the weir weirder one because its brother, the 55010, the DX0D, I think, is the more prevalent one. Um, it has some differences. It's a tiny bit better than the um, 5010 but it's still around the same performance ballpark um, and as you can see on the tab it's it says zx0 i don't know if that's visible but there you go uh, so let's take it apart this is something that has been used or has been in use in my home i have made some changes to it um, externally you can see i have two pcb antennas uh, because I couldn't find something that runs through these holes easily and these were available um, and they are quite discreet once you have them on and you can just plug these away. Uh, on the front panel, there's not much, there's the power button, some, I, I, of course I got this second hand from some place and the asset tag's been ripped off. Uh, a USB port that has seen better days another USB port that might be doing okay, but that one's in really bad shape. Um, and at the back, you have two serial ports, a DVI port, a display port, uh, two USB 2, two USB 3, which is a welcome addition, a parallel port. So if you want to use this for, as a replacement for Raspberry Pi or something else, uh, you can use GPIOs on the parallel port and they should work just fine. A gigabit ethernet and a 19 volt barrel jack and this is not a special barrel jack it's just a standard 5.5 by 2.5 barrel jack and it works just fine uh, apart from that there's your Kenningston Ken, Kenningston block I think that's how it's pronounced uh, yeah pretty standard so let's take it apart see what's inside and how it differs from the 5010 uh, so back screws were missing when I got got it. So just you know pull the thing apart and shows up. Uh, so this is the um, internals. Uh, one of the surprising things is it doesn't use a sodium. It uses full size DDR three dims and see if it ever focuses on them but I can take these apart so I have one uh, oops I have one full height DDR3 dim this is a 4 gig module so I think both of them are 4 gig modules so this is a 4 gig one and then we have another 4 gig one and yeah 1333 works fine I'm not entirely sure what so the final clock rate everything works on um, for memory but these two have been working fine there's a mini PCI slot uh, and I've added a network card to it I'm not entirely sure if it's PCI capable um, or you can just add a USB based network card to it and it works uh, there's a SATA DOM slot and it's I don't have a SATA DOM uh, I mean, I have some, They're, they aren't like usable sizes, so they are just like 8 or 16 gigs. I needed something more. I think this is a 128 gig SATA um, SSD, so it's not a DOM. Uh, fun fact, if you've never opened a SATA SSD before, this is how they look from the outside. That's the back, and if you open it, they are just, ah, open up. There are just tiny DOMs in there. There's like I've barely, maybe like a few, maybe eight terabyte SSDs are full size, but I've never seen SSDs that are larger than this. This is like the extent of how big um, SAT SSDs are. Even one terabyte ones will easily fit into this space. Uh, apart from that, not much where you have another SATA port, RTC battery, you have a daughter board that, that's for your uh, serial port IO and PS2 keyboard oh there's no PS2 mouse board which is interesting um, nothing else um, I'm not going to take a 
apart the PCB or this standoff. I will, however, um, take apart the heatsink and show you the silicon that powers everything. Um, spec wise, it's a bit different, as I said, but it's in the same family of a 5010. So the 5010 had a AMD G48E dual core at 1.4 gigahertz. And this particular one has a AMD GT56N 1.65 gigahertz dual core um, with Radeon 6310 graphics. Um, but yeah, so it's not that different. It's, it's a bit larger because of the full size sodiums and couple extra IOs, but it's about the same um, in terms of functionality and how fast it is. So let's take out the heatsink, see what's good inside. And there you go, that's the CPU and the GPU and let's just find a way to clean it all up. All right, so we don't see this often, but at least the silicon on this particular board has inscriptions on it. And so let's see if I can get this in focus and that's the, that just says something to do with AMD. Um, this one's made in Taiwan. This one is made in China. Yeah, that one says made in China. So that got fabricated in China, which is interesting. Uh, let me see. Um, there you go. I'm guessing the larger one's the CPU because all the memory trace goes from that to the memory controller. And in very, in some very specific cases, the GPU is the one that's taking care of the memory um, and passing it off to the CPU in a North Bridge, South Bridge situation. So I've seen this with um, the desktop board that gets converted from old PS5 or defunct PS5 chips. Uh, I have one of those, so eventually I'll make a video about that. Uh, but also in situations where you have an NVIDIA and Southbridge or not chipset, and like in NVIDIA ION or um, something else. And though in those situations, the chipset itself is connected to memory and then sort of shares that over its own DMA to the CPU, not instead of going the other way around. But at least in this case, again, assuming that's the CPU and that the tiny GPU and um, it's a regular setup. Uh, heatsink itself, not that interesting, but these are very low power parts. So I think that that's just enough for passive cooling these components. All right, so let's quickly reassemble it, power it on, and it has, I'll use my Foronix test suit um, SSD, and then we'll boot into Debian and see how things work. Um, and then we'll go from there. Few in interesting things, but again, it's a fairly boring kit, not much to it. Um, performance is meh. Uh, I don't think I've, glance or anything specific here um there's not much to it it's an interesting buy if you need like a terminal that just shows video and like a you know shop display kind of thing but that's about it the only interesting part in this is are uh, the full-size dims to be honest Okay, now with this closed, let's take a look at the um, the OS. Um, I, I, I did have to switch the SSD. So I'll go ahead, switch the SSD, connect this to my capture card, 
and we'll take a look. All right, so everything's done. It's booting up. Uh, we could have looked at the bias, so let's go and quickly do that. See what settings are there. Can't find. All right, let's see. It showed up a second ago. Oh, there you go. Right, so as I said, AMG GT5 6N dual core, 6, 1.65 gigahertz. You can see all of the uh, memory and the RAM is running as th at, at 1333, so that's good. Um, I, yeah, just your regular things. Uh, which is interesting, I can see wireless LAN and Bluetooth here. So I'm guessing the uh, the Wi-Fi wi and Bluetooth card I plugged in is injecting some options. Um, I don't know how, but it is. Or it's something built into the um, BIOS because this board, this PC, mini PC or whatever was shipped without the uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. So that is interesting. Frame buffer size. That's the max it shares. Um, security. You have TPM. I'm guessing TPM one. Uh, but this is UEFI. So it could be TPM two. We don't know. And then your uh, boot mode select. So it's quite good. You can turn on and off secure boot. You have option for uh, legacy boot. Where was it? Somewhere here. Yeah, boot mode legacy or UEFI. Either one will work. Um, so, yeah, um, it's actually not that bad. In terms of mini PCs, they sometimes tend to be too locked down. It's not, gives you a bunch of options. So let's boot into Debian. Uh, any choppiness you see in terms of mouse or uh, window movements, probably because of the capture card, it's not a very good one. Uh, just enough to make things work, All right? So what I usually do with board like these or mini PCs like these, I do benchmark them and I have been benchmarking them for quite a while. Uh, that being said, my open benchmarking.org login doesn't really work. So I keep sort of re-adding um, the same benchmark to the same result file. Right, so I didn't do a very good job of naming these. And what ends up happening is you have to look through the GPU name or whatever the default name uh, PTS thinks is the good one. Um, so I think I'll go, go I'll, I'll go ahead and run these again on as many hardware as possible and correctly name them. Via, um, according to the product name so like we have our benchmark for this particular mini pc here and so we have to trace this wherever it says um that so uh, one what was it 171 on gl mark 2 not that good barely as good as a pi um and then Tiny Membench. Again, a lot of this makes sense if you're comparing two products, but right now we're just looking at um, the ZX0. Uh, let's see if I can find the other one, uh, the 5010 in this list somewhere. Oh, there you go. So that's the fit. That's 5010. Oddly enough, <laughs> 1333 tiny mem bench but that has nothing to do with the memory clock so as, as you can see it's a bit faster than the 5010 
and even here it should be a bit faster so 122 on the 5010 and zx0 has 17 uh, 171 um linux kernel compile uh 42 4200 seconds versus i have no clue where the other one is did it not complete Probably not. No, it didn't. So, 4,212 seconds to compile Linux kernel versus DNF. Dark table is OpenCV, and this is CPU only. And this is 182 versus 214. I mean, less is better. Um, similar story overall. So, yeah, just slightly better than the 5010 um the 5010 is smaller a little bit this is a little bit bigger this has full size dims those are easier to get um refurbished uh, whereas i don't think anyone's selling ddr3 fresh out of the box these days thank you so much for watching this video uh, hopefully you got some grasp on what the zx0 is as compared to 5010 most for the most part and I'll see you all in the next one.